program. Av og til er det slik at livet går, I, går litt i sirkler, og noen ganger er det slik at dagen går i sirkler. Dere husker kanskje at statsråden startet dagen med å snakke om Parkinsonnet, og nå kommer vi tillbaka igen til Parkinsonnet. Nästa foredragsholder kommer fra Nederland for att fortelle oss om utviklingen av et nätverk fra Parkinson-pasienter. Og den som skal snakke til oss, det er professor Bastian Blom. Og ved hensyn til han, så skifter jeg nå til engelsk. Professor Blom is a consultant neurologist at the Department of Neurology at Radboud University, Nijmegen Medical Center. Together with uh, Dr. Martin Manneke, he developed Parkinson's Net, an innovative healthcare concept that now consists of 64 professional networks for Parkinson patients, covering all of Netherlands. We're pleased to welcome you to the stage, Bastian Bloom. Uh, we're looking forward to listen to your recipe. A warm welcome. <coughs> Thank you so much for this uh, kind introduction. My name is uh, Bas Bloom, um, and I understand that this national health conference usually only features Norwegian-speaking people. So my first disclosure is that I am 100% Dutch. <laughs> and this is me in a typical uh, polder, and a polder is a uh, typical Dutch, a grassy field with cows and a little church and windmills. And a polder model is a typical Dutch expression for the fact that we Dutch people like to share what we have with others. This has been part of our national heritage, and that's the, one of the main reasons we are here. You can also see that I'm a doctor. Um, I work at a university medical center. Uh, what I'm going to present is an exciting healthcare initiative. Some people think it is a company that we're running, which it is not. This is a university-based initiative, and we're here to share. And why share with Norway? I think the Dutch and the Norwegians have a rich <laughs> joint history. You used to kick our butt many times with legendary heroes such as these people. Lately you've had a bad time, I think, a bad spell with Sven Kramer basically beating the shit out of every Norwegian <laughs> skater. Um, and when I was doing a, a Google search and a Wikipedia search, I found out something really interesting. One of the most famous Dutch skaters from the legendary 70s, when the Norwegians and the Dutch were fighting mighty uh, skate wars, was uh, Kees Verkerk. And Kees Verkerk, apparently, this is Kees, when he retired, he went to Norway. <laughs> so what do you do when your work is done? You go to Norway, which is probably the best country in the world. He apparently opened a campsite and never left the country. And as you've heard this morning from Bent Hoye, the Minister of Health, we are now opening a new chapter in our joint history, uh, which is a partnership for Parkinson's disease and hopefully for other chronic conditions as well. And I think one of the main reasons uh, we are here is to learn from differences. Um, I know many Norwegian colleagues very well. There are excellent neurologists here. There is very good healthcare system. And what we have developed in the Netherlands is definitely not the only solution to healthcare. And what we are hoping to bring is some of our expertise in organizing care in networks, but we are as much interested in what Norway has to offer to us in the Netherlands. And I hope by partnering, we can fortify each other and thereby build what is ultimately the best healthcare model so that we can help people with Parkinson's disease. Because that is what is our mission. Our mission really is to help improve the lives of people with Parkinson's disease worldwide, and that includes Norway, and because I know most of you may not be very familiar with Parkinson's disease as a neurological condition, I'm sharing with you a beautiful film by a Norwegian photographer, Leif Andersen, who is um, also a Parkinson patient, and uh, let this film uh, speak for itself. Thank you. 
I think that's a beautiful movie that really sets the stage for what I'm going to present. I also want to thank the uh, Norges Parkinson Verbund, I hope I pronounced that right, for their partnership. This is their symbol, and this is my wrist. I'm carrying their si signal, shaken, not stirred, which is a powerful symbol against Parkinson's disease. This is a man with Parkinson's disease. I'm giving you a little insight in what this disease can do. It has a severe gait disorder, but Parkinson's is a remarkable disease because people can compensate, as you can see. This is an inverted walking cane that allows this man to walk. This is the so-called walking ladder that allows him to walk in the grass. Inside his house, he has nailed these bars to the floor, but now his wife stumbles over these obstacles. So you can see how the whole system is affected. Um, he can still climb stairs, which we now know is a very consistent observation. It'll come back in a minute. And he can still ride a bicycle. As you know, all people in the Netherlands ride their bicycles, and Parkinson patients are no exception. And I think that's a very powerful image of how people with Parkinson's in the face of severe debility can still able to move if you exploit the right brain areas and use the right techniques. And one of those techniques is called visual cueing. It's putting tape on the floor at a fixed distance. And this is the very same patient that you saw in the previous video. And I asked him to come to the hospital to do a little demo video of visual cueing, because this is what we are telling our Parkinson net physiotherapists. So we put the tape on the floor exactly as the guidelines were telling us, and he's not improving. And I said, come on, guy, do it. I took an afternoon off to do a demo video, and now you're not doing it. And he said, no, the tape is not good enough for me. There must be a height. So we replaced the tape, put little bars on the floor, and now he can walk. <laughs> and that's why the slide says the patient as the teacher, because it is the patient telling us as physicians and therapist, what we should do to help our patients. Now, fasten your seatbelts, because this man has got severe Parkinson's disease. He is n neither able to walk very well. He can climb stairs, which is, again, as I told you, now a consistent observation. Um, very remarkable difference. But of course, you don't have a staircase everywhere in your house. Now, his daughter, who is an artist, has painted on the floor a three-dimensional illusion of a staircase. It's flat as a pancake, and it allows him to walk. And now, throughout the house, she's painted these stairs. <laughs> so, isn't that incredible? And what we're trying to say here is that, in Parkinson's disease, <laughs> compensation is possible. <laughs> It's from Bulgaria. <laughs> Maybe they deserve a Parkinson net as well. I'm but as you can see, the problem is still there, but with a little counterweight, you can... But that's the essence of physiotherapy, occupational therapy, for people with Parkinson's disease. You don't have to cure the original problem, which is a dopamine deficit, but by compensation, people can still move reasonably well. So the serious take-home message here is, one, in order to optimally care for people with Parkinson's, with all these remarkable tricks and variations, as a physician or an other professional, you need to understand the disease very well. And at the same time, we really need to listen to patients and use their power and their resilience and their, re their ability to resolve problems um, and include them as partners in healthcare. And I know that this morning, this was a big theme in, in your conference, and it's a big theme indeed in Norway. Now, if you look at Parkinson's care, and please don't try to read this in detail, there are many professional disciplines that potentially have something of use to offer to people with Parkinson's. On our last count, there were 22 professional disciplines who at least have something good to offer to people with Parkinson's. And the good news for people with Parkinson's is the evidence is growing fast. These are all evidence-based guidelines, where my center was a main contributing group. Um, uh, for people with Parkinson's, for physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech and language therapy. So the evidence from good clinical trials is now there. The problem is, and forget the word Parkinson's disease and think about your own specialty, there is a huge gap between the evidence that's out there and what patients are today receiving. And that's no different for rheumatoid arthritis or diabetes or dementia. And this motivated us to build Parkinson Net. This is our logo. If you want to read a little bit about Parkinson's net, 
then this paper in the British Medical Journal is a nice review of 10 years of experience in Parkinson Net. And there are three key pillars. Our mission statement, again, is improving the lives of people with Parkinson's worldwide. And there are three main pillars. The first one, again, it relates to the theme of the conference today, is empowered patients. And I will tell you in a minute some examples of how we do this. You need empowered professionals through training, through concentration of care, through collaboration, and I will again show you how we do it. And you need empowered teams. And all three are jointly needed to achieve the optimal result. We use technology whenever we can to support these three visions, but technology is never a purpose in its own right. We use it as supportive tools to reach our goals. And this next little video gives you a quick summary of what ParkinsonNet uses in terms of tools. There are 50,000 patients in the Netherlands with a form of Parkinson's disease. This number will have doubled by the year 2020. At least 19 different types of healthcare professionals are involved in the care for these patients. Because individual healthcare professionals treat relatively few Parkinson patients, they typically lack specific expertise and have insufficient knowledge in this field. Moreover, these different healthcare professionals do not work together effectively. Parkinson Net brings healthcare professionals together and facilitates specialization, collaboration, and the exchange of knowledge. Parkinson Net offers training and ongoing education, develops national treatment guidelines, and brings healthcare professionals and patients together online. Parkinson Net also offers a convenient web-based search engine to help patients in finding the best Parkinson's experts who work close to their homes. Parkinson Net supports healthcare professionals to treat a much larger volume of Parkinson's patients each week. In doing so, these professionals gain increasingly more experience. Taken together, this markedly improves the quality of treatment. Parkinson Net also improves collaboration between healthcare professionals. Bundling these healthcare professionals and improving the organization of patient care leads to more efficient care tailored to each individual's personal needs. Research has shown that the quality improvements achieved by Parkinson Net also helps to contain the healthcare costs, allowing for cost savings as high as 20 million euros. Parkinson Net started as a very small initiative in the eastern part of the Netherlands. It now is a full nationwide network with over 3,000 trained professionals. If that somehow scares you, our plan with the Ministry of Health is to start small in Norway with the regions of Oslo and Stavanger, build a success there and scale gradually up. We scaled also in the Netherlands, so you don't have to start with a nationwide implementation immediately. What we do is use the very same guidelines now as training material for professional education. Note that many of these guidelines are available in English, which might be of use if you decide to use it here in, um, in Norway as well. This is just an example of the European Physiotherapy Guideline. An element that we're particularly proud of is now a dietary guideline for people with Parkinson's disease. Nutritional issues and exercise are big elements now in self-management and support and we have a guideline outlining all the evidence for healthy food for people with Parkinson's. And although this is in Dutch, we even have a cookbook for people with Parkinson's disease, which is essentially the guideline with all tips and tricks for patients, as well as healthy recipes tailored uh, to their specific disease. We try to bring our network together once every year in a national conference. We also have regional conferences multiple times a year. This is the King of the Netherlands, who visited our 10th anniversary. He's clearly having a good time, as you can see. Um, but what we strongly believe in, and this is again something we are happy to share with you here in Norway, is Parkinson Connect, which is essentially a Facebook for healthcare, but now in a secure environment, where patients can meet other patients online, where professionals can meet other professionals online and exchange experience and knowledge, and where the two worlds are gradually now beginning to blend, and where professionals begin to answer questions from patients online. That's a very nice bridge to 
the patient as a partner, which is a mission slogan at the Radboud University Medical Center. This paper literally just came out in the BMJ. Look at the date here, September 15. Co-creating health, more than a dream. And it outlines all the possibilities that you can use to really engage patients as a partner in healthcare. One of our most successful interventions is the healthcare finder. You can just type your zip code um, and then you will find all the professionals who have been trained as part of our network on the web. Um, you can actually check this out this evening yourself. This is all in the public domain. Um, you can review the distance you need to travel, which of course in Norway is a much greater challenge um, than it is in the Netherlands. And then you can say, well, hang on, I'm really looking for a speech and language therapist. So you click on speech and language therapist. You travel the distance you are maximally able and willing to travel. And then you say search. And Google Maps will give you the three specialists in your area. You can review their faces. She looks friendly. I'll pick her. But this is how it goes. This is empowering patients. You can even review where she's working. And this gives patients comfort while they're sitting in their own home. And people can introduce themselves, share their passion and experience, and patients make a weighted decision whether and when they go and can book their own appointments. Thinking further about the specific situation in Norway, this is a paper that I just published together with my good friend Ray Dorsey in England. And the paper opens with the sentence, we could not have designed healthcare worse. We're asking patients with poor driving abilities to come to hospitals along bumpy roads, wait for hours in waiting rooms, to see the physician for 10 minutes, and then drive all the way home. It's really the wrong way around. And now imagine, we talked about Kees Verkerk. Kees Verkerk retired in Norway. Now, Martin Munneke, my good friend, has just decided to retire here when he's pensioned. <laughs> now, imagine he develops Parkinson's disease, and his nearby neurologist lives here. It's horrible. Imagine the travel he needs to make, maybe take a boat, to get to the doctor. So an alternative is the return of the house call. In the 19th century, patients never came to the hospital, the doctors came to the patient's home. This is good old-fashioned medicine. Now we can do this with virtual calls, and this would be particularly exciting for Norway. And this is a trial done by my friend Ray Dorsey in the United States, where he randomized patients to either come to the hospital or to receive a telemedicine video consultation in their own homes. And he looked at feasibility, clinical outcomes, and the economic value. And the next slide that I'm going to show you is really very compelling. This is the total amount of time spent going to the hospital. Look at it, it's 255 minutes, only a small proportion of which is spent seeing the doctor. The net amount of time spent on the telehealth consult is much, much less, and almost all of it is spent with your doctor. And you know what was so cool about this study? The outcome was identical. It wasn't better, we shouldn't over-romanticize this, but it wasn't worse. It was the same, but it was much more efficient and it was much more economically effective. And another final example that I wanted to share about empowering patients is something we learned when we decided to partner with Kaiser Permanente. There is also a parking senet in California, and as I said in the beginning, we are hoping to learn as much in Norway as we're hoping to bring, and the same was true in California. And Kaiser Permanente, a healthcare giant in the US, uses the voice of the customer program to really listen to their patients. It's borrowed from industry, and it's a deep interviewing method for patients. And when we did this with about 100 patients in the Netherlands, we had some very stunning results. But I just give you one example of a lady who had been in our hospital for almost 10 years, who was seen four to six times a year by our nurse practitioner. And we thought we knew this patient inside out. And when we used this deep interviewing method, she said, what I really want is a tandem bicycle so I can go out with my husband. And our nurse practitioner said, shit, I never knew it, because even in the Radboud UMC, where the patient as a partner is our slogan, we still decide the topics in the, in the consultation. So that's a, something to think about. And the final example, and this is really something that we're proud of, is we've built a little television studio in our hospital, and we broadcast live 
informative television to patients once every month. We have always a patient at the table. We have a panel of patients who decides about the topic, so we don't decide what we talk about, it's the patients. Patients can view us live, they can raise questions, or they can review missed episodes offline. If you go to parkinsontv.nl, you can review all 26 previous episodes. And it's about traveling, sleep, sex, relational issues, job loss, relevant issues to people with Parkinson's. And it's an encyclopedia of knowledge, which we are now bringing to the patient's homes, instead of asking the patient to make the complex journey to the hospital. Now, does it work? We've done a number of studies. One of them is published in the British Medical Journal, but we have four big randomized clinical trials. This is just one example. What you can see, and it's almost a stunning result, is that hip fractures have gone down by 50% in the Netherlands since the introduction of Parkinson net. And it makes sense if you understand that there are now trained physios giving adequate gait and balance training, that OTs are removing the loose rugs on the floor. And what is interesting, and maybe that's why the Ministry of Health was also interested, is healthcare costs went down. And this is about 700 euros per patient per year, which is between 20 and 30 million euros, about 6% of our chronic annual expenditure on Parkinson's care alone. Imagine if you're saving 6% on diabetes, on rheumatoid arthritis. It's massive, and it's not by working harder, it's by changing the way we work and by empowering patients. This is one of our latest results, Parkinson Atlas, which is in the public domain. You can check it out yourself. These are the 68 regions. These are hip fractures per region. This comes from medical healthcare claims. And even after 2010, when our BMG paper came out, we still see continued improvement and reduction in hip fractures. Now, just in closing, our international experience, as I told you earlier, we are very proud that Kaiser Permanente, who toured Europe three years ago in search of innovations that would help them to add greater value to the lives of their clients, picked out Parkinsonet as an example to improve care. And just last week, we had a very exciting phone call because Parkinsonet California is now up and running for about a year. And the director, the CEO of uh, Kaiser, told us that a little over one year after the introduction of Parkinsonet, hip fractures are going down, hospital admissions are going down, and are seeing shifts in healthcare, which I think is incredible. So it works in a different system. The other thing we learned at Kaiser, and this is maybe my most important slide, is that the Dutch Parkinson net was not a copy-paste introduction in Kaiser. In the Netherlands, Parkinson net is mainly a community-based network. Kaiser is a chain of well-organized hospitals. But the basic ingredients of Parkinson net could be used in California. And that's why I have this Starbucks slide here. If you go to Starbucks, Starbucks has coffee beans, milk, mugs, and some of you may like a double espresso, another one may like a triple grande latte, but you use the same basic ingredients to tweak the coffee to your likings. So we used the basic ingredients of Parkinson Net, professional training, patient education, clever IT guidelines, to help build a better healthcare system in Kaiser. And Kaiser brought us as much as we brought Kaiser. Think about the Voice of the Customer program. So I spoke to Bent Hoyer the earlier today, and we're hoping that Parkinson Net will achieve the same results here in Norway. Again, the first thing we will do is speak to people in Norway what's already good out there. Oslo and Stavanger have excellent centers for Parkinson's. There's no need to improve that. We need to listen what is good. We need to listen what could be improved. And some of the toolboxes that we have might be able to use, to be able to use here. And we're hoping, this is a typical Norwegian slide, that eventually this model for Parkinson's could be used also for other chronic conditions. And I told the minister that I envy Norway because Holland has a fragmented healthcare system with multiple payers who are in competition. You are in a unique position to use whatever we are trying to introduce in Norway to bring it now to diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. And hopefully Parkinson's model 
could serve as a template for how you help people with other chron chronic conditions as well. I just have one video to close, that's two minutes. Can I show that? All right, and then we're done. The world is changing faster than ever before. There are now over 7 billion people on this planet. In five years time, there will be more than 8 billion. More and more people are growing older, confronting us with enormous challenges. Already more than 5 million people worldwide have Parkinson's disease, and this number is expected to double in the next 15 years. Parkinson's is a debilitating neurological disease with a tremendous impact on the lives of patients and their families. Unfortunately, there is no cure. How can we make sure that everyone affected by Parkinson's receives the support they deserve? And how can we maximize our efforts to improve the quality of their lives? Parkinson Net was founded 10 years ago to find answers to these important questions. Today, almost 3,000 healthcare professionals are part of Parkinson Net in the Netherlands, and they are fully committed to helping families with Parkinson's. Together, they share crucial information on Parkinson's disease through education, regional meetings, national conferences, and online networking. They listen to individuals with Parkinson's disease to understand their personal needs. They treat them according to the latest scientific evidence, together with other professionals, as a true team. They support them to live the lives they want to live. But most importantly, they give them hope. Parkinson Net is available for all individuals with Parkinson's in the Netherlands. But we still have an even bigger mission on this small planet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Bloom. This is a coffee cup from a labor uh, uh, working uh, training center that, uh, that has been made uh, for a specific group. It's, it's, it's a very small gift uh, for the speakers at this conference. And I would like to congratulate you on your progress on doing this important work in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, it's been very impressive to listen to. Um, also, I would like to congratulate you on being caught up by the um, uh, Californian health systems, uh, the Kaiser Permanente, because uh, they truly are one of the more innovative health systems uh, globally and, and welcome you uh, to Norway to, to continue to work here. Uh, of course, we didn't like it very much when you showed uh, Sven Kramer, uh, be <laughs> because he has really been dominating skating for so long. Uh, it's nearly not interesting to watching skating anymore. Um, but but of course, we we would normally get into a very good mood when you showed the cross country yes. uh, skiing. Uh, but just these days, we're a little bit unsure because they they have developed this fantastic competence on asthma medicine, and we are a little bit unsure as a nation of how to think about that just now. You may, have, you may not have heard about this. No. no. It's good, that's good for you. That's good. I, I will adjust my slides for next time. Yes. Okay. So welcome back. All right. Thank you.
Da skal vi gå videre i, i programmet. Og da skal vi starte med å se del 2 av skolematvideoen. Dette er førsteklassene blå og rød. De vanlige har de med seg matpakke på skolen, og de som vil få melk. Okay, så er det bare I dag skal blå klasse få åtte sin mat, og rød klasse skal få maten til nye mat. Nei! Kjempegod, ja. Men det vil ikke gjøre. Alle spiser, da. Det ser ut som det spiser mye nå. Ja. Det er ikke spist frokost. Å oh, nei, jeg har ikke spist det. Jeg har ikke, ikke tenkt på. Du er litt slappe. Ja, Alle sammen var helt hvite. Hva synes du om å ikke få frokost i deg? Ja, man kan jo bli litt sulten. Å oh, nei. <laughs> Hvordan kan du se sulten ut? Men, å, hu? Hu likte i seg. Så skal jeg på. Så skal jeg på. Det er jo noe mer mat. Det er ikke mette nå. Det er ikke mette. Det er ikke mette. Oi. Sukkerkikken. Med en gang. Nei. Åh, gad. De er så sultne, så er de sukkerkikk som de... Nå er det helt klikk. Du ser stor forskjell, da, for de som har fått i seg mye sukker og lite mat. De her er mer konsentrerte. De har ikke den sukkerkikken. Nå, 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 nå depla. Sånn, halvtid med time etter at jeg har spist. Han gjør noe, han kan ikke stå opp igjen. Det var din gruppe? Ja. ja. ja min gruppe får jo, fikk tre vaffelbitter og ikke stilt. Jeg lyser om det. Nå skal vi... Eh, nå er det siste time. Vi skal forslutte at de... Det er jo de jeg er sulten nå. Ja. Se om det er det. Jeg vil se det her. Jeg får litt sånn torturert små førstegassegir med maten min. Ja, men... Han er spaced ut. Åh, han er så ferdig. Han bare kan liksom vi sitter etter... Tenk hva de sier til foreldrene sine. Kom hjem. Ja, da har vi sett eksperimenten deres, Nina Alto. Har du noen umiddelbare reaksjoner på, på det dere så? Stakkars barn. <laughs> Når vi så på det stedet, så kalte det det tortur. Ja. Det så liksom ut som de satt der og bare var så slitne, og de orket ikke hodet skulle kne og så en gang. Liksom, da, da er det noe feil. Var det noen av dere som kjente dere igjen i noen av disse reaksjonene fra førstelagene? Hvis jeg ikke har spist lunsj eller frokost, så blir man sånn i de to siste timene at man liksom, åh, nå må man snart hjem og få i seg noe mat. Så blir jeg veldig slapp og veldig lange blikk, og det er liksom ikke en måte på. Det er liksom, man har jo forskjellige vaner da. Noen, dere føler kanskje ikke at dere har veldig behov heller for frokost, eller? Hvordan er det? Jeg kunne faktisk ikke forestilt meg å gå ut av huset til skolen uten å ha fått meg en god dose med frokost. Jeg prioriterer søvn, egentlig. Over frokost? Ja, over frokost og sånne ting da. Hvor, hvordan er det sånn sosialt da? Er det... Jeg husker i hvert fall at da jeg gikk på ungdomsskolen, så var det i hvert fall en tid man trengte for å koble av. Jeg synes det er viktig å ha god tid å spise på, og det er en tid hvor gutta får satt seg ned og snakket litt og... Koblet av? Koblet, ja. Takk til Helsedirektoratet for en, en morsom film. Da skal vi videre i programmet. Da er det Gry Nørstenge. Hun er leder av mental helse i Hedmark. Og hun vil fortelle...